Welcome to America's Top Rebbitzins. In the merit of this class, may Hashem watch over all the Jewish people and give enormous strength to the IDF soldiers, including Aviva Tamara Bat Shoshana, Abraham Gilad Ben Liat, Ashlam Ben Ruit, and Ayelet Bat Rachel, and also for a Fru Shalema for Tamara Bat Elka. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to us on the America's Top Rebbitzins YouTube page, or click follow to follow us on your podcasting app so that you're the first to know when an inspiring new episode is posted. Today, I am very happy to welcome Rebbitzin ZC Darren. Rebbitzin ZC is the director of Sinai Academy Jewish International School and Cape Town Torah High School. She is also the spiritual feminine leader of the Bloomberg Jewish Community Center. Rebbitzin ZC gives ongoing psycho spiritual soul talks in her community, sharing her passion of bringing people closer to their soul source. She is a facilitator of um, Echad Oneness, where she helps Jewish women explore Jewish mindfulness and meditation. She offers courses and retreats for women to connect to mind, body, and soul based on the deep wisdom of the Torah. That is so beautiful and so authentic. Thank you so, so much for being here. Please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Hi, it's a pleasure. And um, it's really great to have this opportunity. Thank you. And I love what you're doing. Um yeah, you basically said it all. So it's all good. <laughs> I got seven children on the side. So thank God. Wow. Uh, one of my big, uh, big things that I do, you know, besides right, we're running school and school and everything else. So, right. I was going to say, your mother on top of everything else. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I just want to point out something ironic today before we started the, the show. Um, Rebbitzin ZC is in South uh, South Africa where it's summer right now. We're recording this in January 2024. And here we have a snowstorm. I'm in New York. And so it's snowing here and it's beautiful and sunny where you are. I just thought that it was so ironic. It just so, it, yeah, really ironic and funny just the way the world works. <laughs> yeah. Holding both of God's elements in one picture here, you know? Exactly. Very well said. <laughs> so today I want to talk about a very special mitzvah that Jewish women have. It's lighting the Shabbos candles every Friday night. This mitzvah mm -hmm. is so powerful that Shabbos candles are sometimes referred to as neshek, which means weapons. Shabbos candles are the secret weapon of women for bringing light into the world. The word neshek is actually an acronym for Neirot Shabbat Kodesh, neshek. Neirot Shabbat Kodesh, the Holy Shabbos candles. So can you please explain to us why lighting candles, why lighting Shabbos candles specifically is so powerful and what we as women can achieve by fulfilling this mitzvah? Sure. So um, the mitzvah of the mitzvah firstly means, you know, people translate it as commandment, but actually it means connection point. So this connection point uh, for the Jewish woman of lighting Shabbat candles actually is one of the three special mitzvot of the Jewish woman. Um, one being the baking of challah, um, taking off the piece of challah dough and, and praying at that point and making challah, which represents the kosher in the home um, and Shabbat candles, which represents the observance of Shabbat. And the third mitzvah being um, fam mikvah, which is a ritual immersion for family purity, which is, the third mitzvah of the Jewish woman. Now, obviously, there's many more mitzvot. There's many more connection points that we have and commandments from God. But those three are specifically given to the Jewish woman, and they represent the pillars of what makes a home an observant Jewish home. And they are gifted to the woman to bring down into her home. And the Shabbat candles really sets the tone for um, really bringing this environment and this element of Kedusha of holiness and purity and beauty and godfulness into the home. And we set the tone every Shabbat for the entire week. So it's like the week that was and now kind of fitting into the universal um, energy of God creating the sixth day for six days and resting on the seventh. And we bring that element of rest into our home in, in, in a godful way. And it's not just rest because I'm tired. It's 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 divine rest that Hashem is giving us the permission and the uh, koach, the the energy to reboot our entire week and to get conscious and to get mindful around what are we doing here in this world, what's the purpose, etc. And then um, setting our week ahead, um, you know, Shabbat being that really crucial um, gem that comes at the end of our week and begins 
almost the next week or like sets the tone projects for the next week. And so Shabbat candles really is a moment in time where we can really take seriously and consciously just not just rush the process and light the Shabbat candles for the sense of just, you know, doing the mitzvah and then rushing off to your Shabbat dinners or your synagogue or whatever it is, but actually taking the time to spend a little bit of time connecting um, with our source, with our neshama, with Hashem, our source above, uh, you know, father, mother, and um, really tapping into who we are, what we are, what we're asking for, for, our, for ourselves, for our children, for the world. And no better time now than um, to bring in Shabbat candles, especially as we pray for Eretz Israel, for our Holy Land, for our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land and around the world. Um, and just for, I mean, we always we always pray for everybody at that moment and really just to align ourselves. So yeah, it's a really beautiful opportunity as we bring in the Shabbat. I love that. And I love that you said um, that mitzvah is a point of connection, a connection point. It really, so it, mitzvahs, mitzvah really connect us to Hashem. And mm -hmm. also they connect us to each other, to fellow Jews. And they also connect us to ourselves, you know, to our purpose, like you were saying, our purpose, our meaning exactly. life. Yes. So I really love that. Our and inner connection, our inner points, neshama also, you know? Yes. Yeah. If you want to expand on that, that would be great because I, th I feel like this is what the crux of the Shabbos candles are because I was, as I was saying before, they're, they're neshek, they're weapons, they're weapons that, you know, we light, we light, we make light in the darkness and we create, mm -hmm. you know, such Kedusha, such holiness in the world. And we, we share that with the other nations. And that's why I think that, that, that Shabbos candles are such a neshek, such weapons. But yeah, if you want to expand on that, that'd be great. Yeah. Um. Just a, a cute anecdote. My daughter was asking me when she saw um, you know, she was asking me like, mom, why don't we, we do protests as Jews? Why don't we, what do we, how, you know, it's, it's not, it's not violent or anything. I said, we're peaceful people. You know, we do, we, we, we pray when we get together. And um, that's the, the energy and the crux of, of the moment of Shabbat candles. It's the connection point of bringing the Shabbat in, but it's also that moment when a Jewish woman who's entrusted with the gift of our heritage of giving it over to our children and to the next generation, to our families, um, who really sets the tone for the Jewish nation, actually, with that moment where she connects to herself and to her inner core and to Hashem around her and within her, then um, her family can connect, her community can connect, the world can connect. So it really starts from an inside out point of view. And um, we we need to think, that's why I do soul talks. We need to think soul, not just body, you know? Exactly. The body, is, the body is the candlesticks and the candles and the the match that you need and the the actual uh, you know ritual, but the the soul behind it is actually what's the intention, what what is the connection, what are the thoughts that are going through my head at that moment? What am I stopping to deep breathe and to really get quiet within and to just be grateful and thank God for everything that has been my week even though it's been hard etc and am i asking for blessings where am i asking from these the, from the source of blessings Baruch Atah, you know you hashem you are the source of blessing um so really to connect with the words that we're saying and to the connection point of the mitzvah that at this moment i'm connecting to my neshama and to hashem that's so beautiful. It's such an elevated way of lighting the Shabbos candles. It's not just strike the match against the matchbox and light the candles. Like physically, it's an internal lighting as well, which I think that's that's the point. That's the important part. Right. And, and it, it gets a little tough practically because sometimes it's a really busy time. You're sending off um, people to synagogue or you, you, you've you got guests to prepare for. It's um, It's been like a, a little bit of a rat race until then. But at that moment to just kind of set up the your space. I mean, I personally, I like with my kids and then because girls over the age of three start, you know, from an educational point of view, they're able to start lighting candles or and, you know, hold the hand, obviously, for safety, et cetera. But um, or them hold your hand. And and then, um, you know, they go, I give them a big hug and then I spend time like on my own. And that's when like just to practically create your space so that. If possible, there's someone who's watching, if, you know, if you have a baby, someone's going to be able to um, take care of your baby so that you can have those few minutes to really, really take the time and lengthen the experience instead of rush through it. Right. So that's exactly what I want to ask you about that. Thank you so much, because I know that something that's really, really special for you is to to connect to Hashem, especially at the point of candlelighting. Like you have a really special connection with Hashem. And that's 
candlelighting is such a special time to do that. And I just wanted to see if maybe you could share with us just like your personal your personal experiences and your personal perspectives, maybe and share a little bit about like what you do and how you personally connect to Hashem at the point of candle lighting. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm no different to, um, anybody in terms of like the rat race that happens in the week. And it, it is, it is pretty, um, busy. And with anyone who knows, uh, you know, Chabad Robertson's home and life uh, knows that it's, it's it's not as calm as it sounds right now. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but, I mean, it is. It, it it's busy. There's kids. There's guests coming. There's guests. There's people who just came over, and you know, you've they've just you've just given them something a bite to eat, and you've got husbands and uh, kids wanting to run off to 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 shul, and um, you know, that's for even an observant home, and like this is this is not a it's not an easy time to to make the space, but it's very precious to me so I I try to set it up in the sense of um coming in from that busyness in and bringing in a new sense of quiet and as I get to the candles I'm like you know it it it, it is better even to have time to prepare for yourself before you get to the candles I can't say I've mastered that yet um that's a goal um just to like be able to bring in Shabbat a little bit calmer and but at least at the point of candles so like that's your crux moment that's like you know <laughs> You, even if you haven't had the time beforehand to just take a deep breath before I even light the candles, just like stop, stand there, just take a deep breath and just connect to body before you even connect to soul, you know, just like the body is the bridge to the soul and just be within your body and take a few deep breaths and say, okay, this was, wow, that was busy. And well, okay, thank God I'm here. And then to be able to um, strike the match and think about, um, you know, we have, we light two candles, particularly for the two elements of Shabbat, um, Zachor and Shamor, and, you know, um, to remember Shabbat and to keep Shabbat. These are like the positive um, commandments and the, the the do's and the don't do's so of Shabbat. Um, and at, and also you can relate it to um, uh, um, yourself and your husband, uh, you know, like you like as a, as, a, as a married woman too. And then there's a custom to add an additional candle for each child that's born. So I have like a beautiful tray of candles with um, my big two candles and my seven little candles for all candlesticks for for all my for my kids. Thank God. So as I'm as I'm lighting them, I also say our names. You know, I I also ask Hashem at that moment, like our Hebrew names. You know, this is for Zisa Bad Rachel. This is for and I say my husband's name and his mother's name and and um, my children, each child. Um, and you can say it's your Ben or Bat, your there's the son or daughter of, and you say your Hebrew name. So um, going through each candle like that, kind of like just to give a moment to asking for the blessings for our children. And then obviously I've got beautiful prayers um, nearby and also take a moment before I light, um, just by the way, to give um, a little bit of charity so that you have, I have little coins in a bag there with a charity box and all beautiful silver um, and wood and like just just adding to the ambiance of the moment. And um, and then as I as I finish the 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 candles, the lighting of the candles, and you 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 move your your hands three times and then cover your eyes. Um, again, just take a deep breath and say the blessing. Um, Baruch Ata Hashem. Very slowly say the words Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kirishanu B'Mitzvotav V'Tivanu Lahadlik Ner Shal Shabbat Kodesh. And that basically means blessed are you, Hashem, our Hashem, King of the universe, who made us holy and connected us to his mitzvah of lighting the candles for the holy Shabbat. And after that, it's a time to ask for world peace and for, please God, an end to suffering and for the time of Mashiach. And it's a time to ask um, for anyone who needs um, you know, I think about, I, I first, I kind of think about the world at large and Eretz Israel, and then I, I I go closer, you know, for the soldiers, for, I, I, I ask Hashem for the, you know, at this point we're asking for, bring them home, you know, and we're asking for peace and we're asking, and then, and then we're asking for the world to know you, Hashem, and for, you know, for, for people to know your people and to know, et cetera. And then we bring, and then I've, I come closer to my community and I start asking for people, um, you know, who I know who need, for example, healing or 
uh, maybe a marriage partner or maybe they need success or maybe they need some livelihood or and I just go through the prayers of what comes to mind of who I know I mean you could have you could be more organized maybe and write it down but I just go through my head and then I come to to my family and to um you know my work and to the shlichut and asking Hashem for success in that and for everyone in their own things and then and then asking for um my husband and myself so kind of like uh, you know starting off inside out and then bringing it outside in and just taking those few moments to feel the connection not to just be in you know an intellectual point of view connecting with Hashem but actually to like bring it down into the felt sense within your body to actually like bring the love out bring the communication and then I just talk you know freely and openly to Hashem you know this is this was the kind of week it was and this is the kind of week I'm hoping for and you ha- like it doesn't always happen that you have so long but as as long as you if you can lengthen it as much as possible I mean there are times that you've got a little baby who's nudging at the, your side or you know it's not always as as possible as I'm as I'm speaking now but if you could just connect to those uh to, to that moment as long as possible and lengthen it as long as possible and not get upset if it gets disturbed but just take what you could get <laughs> then um, you've made a good moment for yourself, for the week, for your home, for your environment, and for the world. I think that's so beautiful. And I love the way that you described it in such depth and detail because that's, you know, that's what we should all strive for on, you know, our Shabbos when we light the candles. But as you said, sometimes life gets in the way and there are kids and there are things that need to be done. So typically, like on a typical Friday night, how long do you spend after you've already lit the Shabbos candles? How long do you spend um, thinking about the people that need blessings and asking Hashem for blessings and then talking to Him in your own words? probably about five minutes, but it's like five minutes, you know, is longer than a rush, you know? So oh, for sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not, maybe, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's 10 minutes, but I, it feels like about, I, I've never timed it to be honest. So yeah. I just, you know, until the moment allows it, I also have to run to shul afterwards and I do have to, um, you know, catch up with quickly finishing up the last minutes, uh, table, etc. But, um, just to to pause for that moment and really make it special. I'd rather come a few more a few minutes late and um, be able to have that moment because that sets that like resets my whole Shabbat. You know, starts it off on the right note. I love that. That's very very well said. And I just want to clarify for people maybe who haven't started lighting Shabbat candles. Um, I want to go back to what you said about how many you light. So you you light two. Uh, you like for the do's and don'ts of Shabbos, some things that you have to do on Shabbos, some things that you don't have to do on Shabbos, or other people look at it for for two people, for a husband and a wife. And then once you start having kids, then, you know, the first kid, you add another candle, the second kid, and so on and so forth. So you end up having two, two for the husband and wife, plus how many kids you have. Is that correct? Yeah. And then you can have another tray for your kids to light, for your girls to light, um, you know, so I have, that's a separate tray that my girls light, you know, Um but basically, that's that's how it is. And we um, try to do that. You take a, you can take along tea lights when you go out and when you go away. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy, but it's just for the essence of it. Right. So exactly. So I I really like that. That so girls age three and up can light their own Shabbos candles, like their very own Shabbos candles. Um, you know, yeah, different from the age that they can understand, like that they're doing something special. Like a, we call it a mitzvah. You know, so. Right. Um. It's, it's around three, the age of chinuch, the age of of when they you know, you can reason with them, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and is it also too that they light like your three-year-old, your four-year-old, your five-year-old? Like, do they, they also like two Shabbos candles, right, for themselves? Like they, like one. they like one. As a single girl, they like one each. Yeah. Okay. So that's and a... That's married, married. You like two. Yeah. Okay. So that's a really important distinction. Okay. So that's... Okay. That makes sense. And you said that you were giving charity. So... You so you give charity before your life, right? Because you're not allowed to touch money after you've after the Shabbos has already come in. Is that right? right. And yeah, we put a we put a coin in the stucker box, and that's like it's almost like um, Hashem. I'm about to ask for my needs and for the things that I'm asking for, and let me just think about someone else before I ask for myself. And also, you're putting in tzedakah because daily tzedakah you're giving, um, but you cannot give tzedakah on Shabbat. You can't touch money on Shabbat, so we give it in before Shabbat, like as the double portion, as the portion for tomorrow. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. It's perfect. Okay. So um, I would just want to dive a little bit deeper now. So as you mentioned, when we light the Shabbos candles on Friday nights, we take the time to really talk to Hashem and to connect with him. 
But in order mm -hmm. to really connect with Hashem, we need to be present and mindful, which as we said, is so hard because we're we're coming from running around and then we're, we may be even going to run around after we like the Shabbos candles. So, you know, we as women, we have, we have so much on our minds at all times. And many of us do find it difficult to stop. Even in our thoughts, we find it difficult to stop, to be present mm -hmm. and to connect mindfully. Can you please speak to us about what we can achieve when we are able to be mindful, especially when it comes to connecting with Hashem and particularly after lighting the Shabbos candles? Um, and also, can you please share with us some strategies so that we can really achieve this mindfulness? <laughs> um, I actually... I have a friend who taught me this, so I'll give a shout out, Debbie, uh, my partner, who on our website, echad, e -C -H -A -D .C -O .Z -A, has some meditations that you could go and check out, listen to for free. Um, basically, this is what taught me some guided meditations that taught me how to calm my mind and how to stay in the present moments and really through deep breathing and just connecting inwards to your breath and closing your eyes. And, um, you know, they say sometimes med meditation before medication. <laughs> so <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so these are the kind of the strategies around uh, meditation and mindfulness to try to learn how to, in the moment, just calm your mind and to um, be able to switch into that moment, even if it's a, a quick switch, even if you're going from being a bit scurried. But the, the, the ultimate aim is that everything that you do should be mind, you know, be done mindful, mindfully so that you can, you can make those transitions pretty quickly. And they are transitions, but whatever you're doing, it is very mindful. But so those are, so that's one strategy. I mean, the, the, the meditation can take many different forms. It could be tefillah in the morning, spending some time each day in connection point. Now, what if you have five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have in the morning, I mean, some people, if they're, you know, retired and they have longer time to sit, whatever it is, but to take that, those moments to just practice building this muscle of mindfulness, which is, which I call Godfulness, because it's not just um, for the sake of the process of mindfulness. It's for the sake of connecting to Hashem and for the sake of connecting to Anashama, for the sake of being within our body so that we could reach our soul um, and not just living a few meters away from our body. So, um, which most people live, you know, where most people live a few meters away from their body. So just to like take deep breaths is actually like really one of the gifts uh, that Hashem has given us, which is such an uh, an easy tool. It's always available. It's always there at the at a red light. You could stop and take a deep breath. We don't often take deep breaths through our nose, and um, you know, actually, it says neshima breath is very closely related to neshama. Um, the only extra letter is the is a yud, which is um, numerically equivalent to ten, which can you we can really elevate and raise and awaken the 10 powers of the soul so if we um if we just take some deep breaths and just remind ourselves at that moment i am now going to be talking to hashem from my heart like it's literally that simple um and you try i mean it's not that simple in the beginning because you might have thoughts that pop in in about your to-do list your past your present your your future and it's, it's not all so easy to be present actually but um the more you practice it, the more it becomes second nature and you're able to accomplish it. And, and we know from a Hasidic um, heritage point of view from, I mean, I study the Tanya, um, which basically talks about the mind ruling over the heart, that we are able to actually control our emotions. We're able to actually, it, this is the gift of what Hashem gave us as, you know, in our biology. So if we just tap into the deep breathing, we're able to take those moments and focus them inward and then be able to really really connect on a deeper level there's many there's many ways i mean i sometimes sit and just listen to the birds and when i hear the birds tweeting i know that like okay i'm present i can hear this you know it takes a few minutes but and with some deep breathing um this is and then I, i'm able to only begin my morning prayers or something morning blessings and the main thing is just to remind myself right now you're talking to hashem you know um it's like the little song that we sing in preschool it's a very a very special thing to be talking to a king when we're davening we're talking to Hashem you know just remind ourselves it's not just making the blessing and running away and these are the like basically you can do the mitzvah with just from a goof point of view from a body point of view or you can bring in the neshama of the mitzvah which is the soul of the mitzvah which is your intention of um Ahava and Yirat Hashem, which is love and awe for Hashem, which are the two wings that actually take your mitzvah up really, really higher in order to make an impact and bring down the shefa and the blessings and abundance that we're 
asking Hashem for. And that's really what makes all the difference. Right, right. And if you're doing that from a mindful point of view, from a present point of view, so you're really, really connecting the mind, the body, and the soul, then you're really, you're achieving what you want to achieve, that connection to Hashem, that conversation with Hashem, that, that oneness, that oneness with Hashem. Right, exactly. And it's just about practicing just doing one. I mean, people used to admire multitasking, but it's actually something not to admire. It is something that we're trying to do is single tasking here. Right. And actually, <laughs> while we can all be great at multitasking, it's not admirable these days. It's actually like, the more I can single task one multiple things a day, the better I'm doing for my mindfulness. So that's my suggestion to everyone. Stop multitasking and start single tasking multiple things a day, slowly but surely, you know? I really love that. And I've never heard that put that way because you're right. Multitasking, that's that's so praised in our society, in our world. But yeah. but now Not I think, me. no, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. Now, like, I think now everybody's going the other way, trying to be mindful. And mindful doesn't mean focusing on 10 things at once. It means focusing at one thing at one time, whatever it is that you're thinking about, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, and then moving on to the other thing and then thinking about that. And I think it's so beautiful because it makes what we're doing and it makes what we're thinking about that much more meaningful because we could we give it a focus and attention yeah and it calms your body down and it, i mean if you've uh, if you've ever tried driving and being on your phone it's like busy for the mind it's like it's dizzying but you yeah. put your phone down and actually just drive you're you free up your mind i mean you want you know i know it's not so easy these days to not multi multitask but it's it, it frees up the mind and you're able to accomplish so much more actually so yeah that's my suggestion. Thank you. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful suggestion. Thank you. Um, thank you. So I also want to say that although being mind, being mindfully connected to Hashem is especially powerful right after candle lighting on Friday night, it's also extremely powerful all week long, not just on Friday night. So I just wanted to bring up that point. And as women, so, we're often doing five things at once and thinking about 10 other things that we need to get done, just as we were saying, our minds are all over the place and very rarely even focused on what we're doing at the moment. So how can we harness the energy of deep, meaningful connection and Godfulness so that we can connect to Hashem whenever we want? So now I want to like broaden it. So now we're not just connecting to Hashem on Friday night. We can even connect on a Tuesday afternoon on our way to carpool. Like I really want to broaden the concept, not just connect, of course, connecting to Hashem on Friday night, but also bringing it out to connecting to Hashem all the time, all week long. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Well, this is what we call menucha, um, true rest. Menucha, we say in our mincha prayers on Shabbat, in the afternoon prayers. Hashem, please give us menucha shlema sheata roteba. Like, please give us the complete, like, virtue of rest that you desire for us, and it's actually desire for her because the Hebrew word ba is for her, and no better place to start on like with the Shabbat candles, of course, but to branch it out to the week that what is true Menucha? Menucha means that I have complete comfort and rest and presence and calm tranquility in whatever I do, wherever I am, knowing that at that moment, Hashem has placed me there by divine design. So um, if you could just breathe that in, that moment of like, I am here because you want me to be here, Hashem. Whether it's head down in children child care or um in a deep conversation or in a difficult work interaction or whatever you're going through good like glad bad mad or sad <laughs> whatever the whatever the emotions are it is exactly where Hashem wants you to be and at that moment you free yourself up with manucha by recognizing and remembering that moment. We, 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 we sometimes get lost and we sometimes get stressed or worried or anxious or, 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 or freak out that like I need to be somewhere else, even in traffic or like where at that moment, just take a deep breath and just rec remember Manucha means presence, mindfulness, Godfulness means I surrender to Hashem's plan right now for me. And that's exactly in that moment. Doesn't matter if you're the janitor or the CEO of the company or you're a stay-at-home mom or a busy, you know, Robertson or whatever it is, um, and 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 everything in between. You are at that moment, you're serving Hashem in however you're supposed to be doing if you remember this. So it's really all um a, you know, the Godful mindset is really what makes all the difference. We live through the lens of our mind's eye. And if we can keep this at the top of our mind's eye, then we live a meaningful life. And we fulfill our purpose and we bring Hashem down into the world. So, wow. yeah, that's it. 
Wow, that was beautifully said. Wow. <laughs> I aspire to do that. I have a lot of work to get there, but I really, really aspire to do that because it makes yep. life so much meaningful. 100%. And, and, and you'll find that you, you get good at it in certain areas and then you'll have some key um, challenged areas that you get tripped up in and that's okay because you're, you know, Hashem's stepping you up. Um, it's always going to be stepping you up to the next level. So don't think that you haven't made progress and you're back where you started. You've made plenty of progress. So it's getting harder for the next level, you know? So that's how it is. It's a good way to look at it. So we don't get frustrated at ourselves when it does get harder. Exactly. Acceptance, compassion, love. And that helps us propel forward a lot more than frustration at ourselves. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And we have time for one last question. So I love that Hashem is always available for us any time of the day or night. He's like our best friend, our life coach, our close beloved relative, all rolled into one. And he's always there for us, guiding us, loving us, watching over us, listening to us and giving us signs of what to do next. So if we're p really paying close attention and being mindful, we can recognize those signs, which is so, mm -hmm. so comforting. So mm -hmm. I would love it if you could please share a story or two about how mindfully connecting to Hashem has impacted your life personally. Yeah. Um, interesting that the more you start to listen to, um, you know, just what what's coming your way, the more you recognize, okay, what does Hashem want of me right now? How am I supposed to serve the world right now? You know, lately I've been... Um, you know, a few things have been coming up and it's the same message. It comes through different forums, you know, different, and, and I, I kind of see like, okay, Hashem, I get you. Um, you know, that's, and then you start talking to Hashem. I mean, if you could talk, the more you can informally talk to Hashem also throughout your day, the more you, you can build this relationship of connection. It's not just at those moments of like, you know, Shabbat candles or mitzvahs or in the mikvah or, um, you know, when you're making the challah blessing or at Yom Kippur and Shul, you know, but it's actually all the time informally, um, not just formally. So how, I mean, a personal story, just interestingly, I've started to trust my, um, you know, my inner guts a little bit more lately. And um, I, I, the other day I dreamt of a friend and I wrote, I decided in the morning, I don't, and usually if like you dream of someone, I just let it go, you know, I decided to write to a friend, um, you know, about, about it. And I was, and I said, just checking in, you know, how are you doing? I just dreamt of you last night. And they were like, no way. I dreamt about you too. That is so strange. And we haven't spoken for months, yet, like months and months. I thought like, okay, well, that's divine design. You know, like that's just interesting. Like there's a Nishama connection. There's a spiritual connection. Um, yesterday I wrote to, and, and then I, I, and I've been getting these messages. Like when I say messages, I mean, it little people are telling me things about the same theme, um, you know, um, some really like for my, for me personally, it's about like somatic healing and, and, and getting more into it. And, um, obviously Hashem has been directing me through the meditation Echad world, like, and, and he sent, you know, he sends people your way and it's like, not even, like, I wasn't even looking for it. And like my friend Debbie came to ask me, what about m meditation in Judaism? Where does it say that? Like, that was like six, seven years ago. And that's how I started the, um, the whole Echa journey and you know I was learning Chassidur Tanya and I said you know let's make a deal I'll teach you you know where where I learned it and you could teach me how to meditate and that's how really like our, my our personal story of how it started but in it but lately you know I'm also it's it's coming up more and more so yesterday I actually messaged um, another friend of mine I said listen we, we're doing a retreat my friend Debbie's gone to Israel I said wouldn't you help sponsor a ticket for her to come back and do a retreat in, in Cape Town and she said, oh, my gosh, that's amazing that you asked me. I dreamed about you last night. And it was, again, it was about a dream. It was so interesting to me because, like, this was the theme that was coming up. Like, trust your, you know, and and ran, I mean, not randomly, but randomly, <laughs> you know, by divine design, I, I chose to message her yesterday. And she says, I mean, I should even read it on my WhatsApp, but it was, like, really so, so cute. She was like, no way that you texted me. Um, I have to just read this. It's really hilarious. Okay. Um, super weird one, but. Um, I had a dream about you. You were leading a bunch of people out of a crazy life game. Sounds about right for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was, it was like, really, that that's just your for personal story. So it was just like, trust the, you know, listen to the message and realize that everything that happens in your daily life is the way that Hashem talks to us. It's the way, it's the, it's the Hashkacha practice, it's the design, the divine design that Hashem like starts directing us. And if you're open to it, you actually see a lot more of the connection points that, 
of this communication that's not only going from you to Hashem, but from Hashem to you. And that's really what like I want to encourage everybody to um to talk to Hashem more and to listen more and to go quiet more and to and you know Hashem will find the ways. He has many, many, many ways. It's like so there you go. Wow. Yeah. I totally agree because I find that too. And I just to want to clarify for everybody who's listening, you know, if, you, if you're not used to talking to Hashem, people, you know, we're used to reading the Siddur and that's one way of communicating um, to Hashem through the written prayers that we have in our, in our prayer book. But we can mm -hmm. also talk to Hashem in our own words throughout the day. I do it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Just they're, they're conversations. They're conversations. They could be in your head. They could be out loud. Sometimes when I'm cooking, I'm talking and I'm, I'm talking to Hashem and they're full conversations. And if you start listening, you get responses, you get little signs, you get little messages back. They're not words. Nobody's going to open their mouth, like talk, you know, Hashem is not going to come and talk to you. It's not like that. It's like, um, like you were saying, things that happen to you, things that happen in your environment, the messages that you get, the people that you come in contact with. Just if you really, really pay attention, you can see how Hashem is communicating to you through your environment and, and through the people in your environment. Right. And really leading you along your 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 personal purpose in this world, you know? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebetzin Zizi, for joining us on America's Top Rebetzins. In the merit of this class, may Hashem watch over all the Jewish people and give enormous strength to the IDF soldiers, including Aviva Tamara Bachoshana, Avraham Gilad, Ben Liat, Avshalom Ben Ruit, and Ayelet Bat Rachel, and also Arafu Shalima for Tamara Bat Elka. Thank you so much again. What an absolute pleasure. And God bless everybody. Thank you, Vera. Amen. Thank you.